the more brilliant people we can get working here, then the faster we can get whatever is in your head out into the world. Let me tell you a story. In 1999, Google was a little startup just like we are. And when they started bringing in chefs and masseuses, we thought, they're nuts. But they were attracting the best possible people, and they were able to create the best product. And now they're worth over $400 billion. And do you know the name of that company? Uh, uh, Google, right? You said it at the beginning of the story. You're right. I did that wrong. TVTL. Hello. Did you say hello? No, I said hello, but that's close enough. Well, I was just driving uh, down uh, Northern Avenue, getting ready to pull into Albertsons, and uh, all of a sudden, I was just minding my own business. Bam! Hit me hard right from the back. I was glued to my seat. I was like, whoa! This house is obviously infested with reticularmates, Mario Cuomo. Well, what's that? What's what? Well, reticular. reticular. See, you can't even say it yourself. <laughs> I'm doing the work. I'm baby stepping. I'm not a slacker. I don't watch television. I don't even own a television. Notice I didn't say TV. TV is a nickname, and nicknames are for friends, and television is no friend of mine. <laughs> hey, all you new listeners, all I can really say is good luck. Well, all right. Hello. Good morning and welcome, everyone, to a Thursday edition of TBTL, the show that just might be too beautiful to live. It's an audiophile's nightmare. My name is Luke Burbank. I am your host. First things first, I love my job. Coming to you from the Madrona Hill Broadcast Center, perched high above the mighty Columbia, where it was bright and sunny this morning. It was very nice, actually. I feel warm and I'm levitating. Got the uh, sliding glass door open. I'm... I'm t-shirted right now. Boy, life comes at you fast. Like yesterday, I'm I'm running the heat and endangering the broadcast because it's so cold today. I'm just just uh, you know hanging ten here, dude, in these summertime vibes, known as well April 11th and also episode 4,182 in a collector series. Let the fun begin. Now the reason I'm excited, I bought a new. Ladder yesterday. Chris is over there, kind of, kind of giving us a look at how to use the ladder there. Uh oh. Okay, we're gonna make sure that Chris is okay. Yep. And that has never happened. Now I um, I did get a little nervous here at the Madrona Hill Studio, going way up on that ladder, but it, because I just bought it and because it's brand new and not some weird jank hand-me-down that I found under a bridge somewhere, it worked, and I did not reenact that scene from QVC from those many years ago. Anyway, we'll talk about that. Also, uh, some guys who were fishing on an, a, a, an island, a deserted island. They were near a deserted island, near Micronesia. Get off Milf Island. And they uh, their, their boat sustained some damage, and they had to land on this completely uninhabited island, and then they managed to get rescued from the island by doing something that I think is all of our plan if we end up on a deserted island. So we'll talk about that. Plus, it's a Thursday, a.k.a. Blur's Day. It's my so, birthday today. Uh, we will do the Blur's Days. And we'll talk to this guy, longest-running Cobro of the show, maybe best known for his depictions of the tall ships. He's just installed a mirror in his studio right behind his camera. And, oh, that um, is a handsome chest right there. Uh, he's just doing a little self-analysis here on this Thursday. He's Andrew nope. Walsh, and he's joining nope. me right now. Good morning, my friend. That's not what we did during sound check. That's not what you played during sound check. That was a trap. You he set up a trap. He doesn't get out of the cock a duty car. <laughs> this isn't what happened last week. That was a trap. You set me up. I actually didn't plan on doing that. I here's the drop that I played for you when we were in test mode. Carol, hold my calls. Mm-hmm. And it was only. As the intro music was playing, that I remembered that a dear friend of the program, who mm-hmm. I may see tonight at Livewire, mm-hmm. um, grabbed this piece of audio when you said the following. Oh, that is a handsome chest right there. And mm-hmm. sent it to me, and I thought, well, that yeah. would actually be a fun little thing on a Thursday. Just put oh. a little put a little pep in everybody's step. You just listen. It was a fun little thing. You it's don't, fine. You have no idea what you were spared from today by me, oh. because I, I thought about sending you a story for top stories and then i imagined your response and then i just 
Oh. I just tabled the idea. Didn't even get into it. That doesn't paint me. That doesn't paint me as a no. as a as a fun, open, no, 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 creative no. partner. It paints you as the conscience of a generation. <laughs> it's a very old generation, unfortunately. But yeah, unfortunately. no. Uh, apparently, uh, in Mexico, uh, one of the news channels was showing images of the eclipse, and uh, somebody had managed to sneak in. I didn't know that this was kind of a go-to joke in Latin America. I'm being very serious here. Like I found out reading this article that this is kind of a go-to down there, but. Um, while they were showing kind of B-roll and clips of the eclipse, uh, somebody had snuck in either a photo or a video of them creating the effect of an eclipse using their testicles. Beautiful purple oh. balls. And that made me laugh so hard. And also, I loved learning that that is, I mean, again, within reason, and I have to offer all the caveats that we now should offer in a... You know, in a safe environment, which is you don't want people showing off their their body parts to other people that don't want to be seeing those body parts. So like that that is that's part of this. But it did make me laugh to think that somebody got that onto television in and, and apparently the newscaster was doing what newscasters do, which was just like reading the script, looking at other things, had no idea that this giant ridiculous thing was looming behind him on the screen. I didn't put that story in the show sheet. No, today, good. That's and so the therefore, point. it won't it won't make it will its way never the happen. podcast at I all. Which play is a nice. Cisco drop. Nothing. None of the stuff that I was worried you would find distasteful has happened on this Thursday. That reminds me of a phenomenon that was going on in the early two thousands that I want to ask you if you remember, because um, it lives large in my head for some reason, although I didn't engage with the content all that much. Before I say that, though. Because it does n nod toward adult content, I want to back up and ask the listeners via you, Luke. Okay. How many? I am of their them... ombuds person. There was a lot of chatter going on um, in the past. I'm going to say month or so, as you would say every now and then on the podcast, like, "Oh, we're trying to keep things a little bit cleaner around uh -huh. here." Kid friendly trying to get show. Get rid of that explicit rating. Kid friendly show. Kid friendly show. And a lot of people had a lot of speculation about what that meant. Where right. we're going to start our a lot of people were wrong. Programming. It's just so frustrating. Um, I want to be in Florida getting a tan on my back. We were going to give that kid a show. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It turns out he's 29 now. Yep. Um, they grew up but so anyway, fast. so of course now we are sponsoring a little league team. So that was sort mm -hmm. of the idea. We didn't want people to think that we're some sort of disgusting podcast, um, <laughs> you know, supporting supporting a little league team or whatever. So we just wanted to sort of like you know keep things clean around here. Yeah. Having said that, we didn't want any of the parents of the TBTL little sluggers to Google the show and see a an explicit rating. Or B, tune into the show and hear us say something, and by us I mean me probably, something kind of unfortunate, and go, what What exactly is happening with this entity that's sponsoring our children's baseball dreams? Also, yeah, now I'm wondering, it, it's either going to be you saying something dirty on the show, um, or listener Bet, who called yeah. in with a legit uh -huh. dirty joke on our voicemail line that I'm going to play for you with Whoa. a lot of uh, adult content warning here in a moment. I mean, it's just, it's filthy, Luke. Really? Um, but do you remember the phenomenon, careful, I think, in though. the... <laughs> spicy. Spicy. Um, in the early 2000s, I want to say, as people got more and more into selling things online, there was this... I don't know if they were perverts or pranksters or if those two um, circles overlapped, but um, people who would take photos perverts, of the objects. pranksters, or prophets. Sometimes they're <laughs> one and the same, Andrew. <laughs> That'll be our show. We'll drive around <laughs> instead of going to diners, drive-ins, and the other Hold on, I'm getting a text right now from Ben. Uh, thank you for your sponsorship of the TV show, Little Sluggers. Your services are no longer needed. We have someone removing the letters from the backs of oh, the jerseys. One person just removing the stitches so they can reuse Would the that jerseys. they were stitched on, they're ironed on, and they're oh, not going to oh, come still, off easy. They're steaming them off. But um, remember the phenomenon of people trying to sell things online, but they would take a photo of the object, but they would be unclothed and hmm. then sort of like almost accidentally capture their reflection in it. So like, let's say, I mean, an obvious example would be like, hey, free tea kettle for sale or mm. whatever. And it's like an alum or, you know, a stainless tea kettle yeah. or something that is reflective. And if you look closely, you can see that the person who's taking the photo is reflected in it kind of, you know, on the handle or something. And if you look very closely, you can see that they are in the buff. 
I don't think I knew about that. But what's mm. funny is, or interesting to me only, is I saw an older clip of Nathan Fielder of Nathan For You fame and The Curse, which I can't recommend highly enough to folks. If you, like me, subscribe to Dwell Magazine and then read it and then feel used and abused by the budgets that people have and by, but yet you also aspire to that world, you will love the TV show The Curse uh, Mm -hmm. with Emma Stone and Nathan Fielder. Okay, that being said, it was a clip of Nathan Fielder, I want to say on like Seth Meyers' show, and he's talking about how he took a picture and he had these sunglasses on and he didn't realize that I think maybe the initial bit is he didn't realize that the sunglasses could reflect back maybe like, a, you know, an adult website that he was looking at or something oh, like something okay. gets caught in the photo that is embarrassing to him. But it's one of those things. And he shows the photo photo and he's like, yeah, this is really kind of embarrassing. And then he has another photo where he's like taking a picture of his meal, but he's holding his fork and his fork is reflecting something more ridiculous and then in Uh each photo there's something that's more impossibly staged (laughs) where something reflective is in the like (laughs) that's a good joke (laughs) it's a great bit i've done a terrible job of describing a great bit but no no i followed along hey if i followed along you did okay i'm wondering though because i think it it seemed like it was it wasn't like this it wasn't in the promo tour for the curse it looked to me like it was from maybe around this era that you're discussing and i'm wondering if maybe this was his play on that trend i actually kind of missed that trend and I'm, uh, I want to say I'm not sad about that, but also I would have, you know, me, I would have probably enjoyed a good spoof uh, of somebody being naked reflected in a teacup or tea Wait, kettle. You aren't, you aren't like me. You didn't spend your mid twenties pinch zooming in on tea kettles <laughs> to just feel something. Well, once. I can tell you that at this point in my life, I do try to uh, pinch zoom on conventional photographs. Have you oh, found yourself yeah. doing that or having the impulse to do it and stopping yourself? I don't know if I found myself in that situation. Mm-hmm. I've heard people talk about it. I've heard people talk about their children who will, you know, are more comfortable with like a tablet. They grew up with tablets. Kids and fantasy. And kids and fantasy. And then they're like three years old and you show them a magazine and they don't understand why they can't zoom in on the magazine. I think it coincides with the fact that my eyesight has really been deteriorating lately. I mean, you know, within the normal range of getting older, I want to be clear. Me too. But okay. it's new to me. I've had, I've been blessed with very, very keen eyesight for for a long time, and never really had to wear glasses when I was younger. And so, even just a minimal amount of interruption in, in that, or, or inconvenience, or having to think about readers now. And I, I think I said this on the show. Uh, I totally now get what the bifocals are all about, and I also totally get what the glasses down the nose are all about, because I found myself doing that in a California pizza kitchen at LAX. I wanted to watch the college basketball game on the TV, but I wanted to look at my overpriced pizza margarita. And also, let's be honest, my phone, which probably had TikTok on it, it was a two-screen experience. And I realized that if I have my reading glasses on, I can see the phone really well, but then I can't see the college basketball. So I moved my glasses down to the end of my nose and thought, Okay, I look at the uh, TikTok, and then I look up, and I'm looking at the game. And then I look down at the TikTok. This is magic. And I was like, oh, this is why people have been doing this since they invented eyeglasses. I think the more that I've had to think about that and, and, and deal with that um, a little bit of, um, you know, whatever, uh, eye hassle, I guess, the more that these kind of things have been on my mind. Yeah, I am still struggling. These glasses that I have now, I've had for a couple of years, and they're my first— um kind of progressive lens glasses they're like you know like bifocals without the line essentially the the bottom part of my lenses are supposed to help me read Mm. i'd never needed that before i'd always been nearsighted but couldn't see in the distance right i always have to i just have to think like nearsighted nearsighted means you could see things close up you just couldn't see far away yeah exactly and my glasses prescription has traditionally been strong i've been wearing glasses my entire life um but now as i got older around age 40 just like they say it's amazing how like some things actually work out like they say <laughs> like it really was <laughs> you gotta like, give it to him 40 you really gotta give it to him it's like that steve martin joke i was wondering if this would be good intro tape do you know this steve i don't think you were quite as obsessed with steve martin records as a kid i wasn't i, I loved was. the movie the jerk i thought it was the funniest thing i'd ever seen but i didn't follow that to like getting his albums nor would i probably have been allowed to possess them 
I have two um, actual LPs. Um, one of them, they're both like his fame. I think he has two pretty famous records that came out around the same time, like Let's Get Small and Wild and Crazy <laughs> Guy, I want to say. One of them is the famous one with the cover with the arrow through his head. Uh-huh. Um, I call that the Gus, and, the little Gus. Oh, yeah, right. Our friend Gus dressed up like that. Um, but uh, these records were uh, given to me by my Aunt Mary when I was in high school, and there is a r- – not – Maybe not as dirty as Bet's joke, but there is a oh, really God. dirty joke on it uh, that I remember like listening to in the car with my parents. Oh, I was like, no. I want them to hear all of this, but I also knew that this joke was coming up. Anyway, uh, he has a joke in there that says, you know, what if you just like kind of died? You know why I was thinking of this? Because of your Hey Dummies video last week. You were talking about kind of beliefs and, and the oh, afterlife yeah. and, and stuff. And um, he said, what if you just died and you just like you went up to heaven and there's like a... St. Peter at a gate and a bunch of angels playing harps. You just be like, oh, shit. I thought this was all bullshit. They <laughs> told me in college this wasn't real. And then, like, how you go about navigating heaven. I didn't do as good of a job on that as Steve Martin did, but it had been jangling around in my head, and I needed to get it out. Um, I hope that's what happens. I think this is what I said in – well, I didn't exactly yeah. – I think I said a version of this in the video. The Hey Dummies question was, what's something that you don't – think is real but you wouldn't be shocked if it turned out to be the case and i think that the person mentioned like aliens aliens Mm -hmm. visiting earth was for them something that they didn't think was happening but if they found out it was happening they wouldn't be like shocked for me Mm -hmm. it would be some sort of an afterlife or something something beyond this that uh you know not just a a, a black curtain goes down and we're done done that's what i think happens yeah but if something else was going on if there were some kind of consciousness if we stepped through some other door i don't think i would be like shocked and i i hope that's the case i'd rather that is the case than what i think is the case which is nothingness although the nice thing about nothingness is you're the last one to know really so i think it's yeah i mean i think it's pretty low it's a it's pretty light it's light work for the person who's no longer with us, that's the good part for them, I guess. Yeah, you know, I'm the opposite on that. I was about to talk about my bifocals, and it's not a good conversation. So let's talk I'd about say it's the it's almost of, as important a, a topic as is there an afterlife? Is there an afterlife? I got to say, like, that would be one of the things I would be most shocked of. And it's kind of funny. It's like I'm not like I'm not like somebody who, for lack of a better word, like is a militant atheist or something like I'm not like somebody who goes around right. like trying to convince other You're people. You're not Richard Dawkinsing up yeah, and down no. the E line bus. <laughs> I have no probably, desire. Probably a bad place to do that as well. I have no desire at all to try to shape other people's opinions about their faith or afterlife or anything like that. Um, having said that, as somebody who grew up, you know. As you know, in a very religious family, I was an altar boy like I, you know, the church was very central to my life growing up and, and our Catholic faith and everything. I went to Catholic school, all this stuff. And now here I am, 47 years old. And one of the most shocking things in the world would be <laughs> that Steve Martin scenario where I like honestly, like I pass away and then something happens and I have consciousness again in a different realm. I'd be like. No effing way. I mean, like, I would let be me, so let me, shocked. Let me be clear. I would also be shocked. I don't want to. I would be floored. <laughs> I mean, it'd be the biggest thing that ever happened to me, probably outside of this podcast. Sure. Yeah. Like, right. I don't want to. I don't want to low key me. that. Yeah, I don't want to be yeah, like. Yeah. I don't want to be like. I'd wake up and go. Oh. All right, yeah, that well. scans. Huh. Well, I I got it right on the hey dummies. Yeah. Where's the snack table? You know. Oh, hey, look, it's Albert Brooks. I feel like he'd be the <laughs> somehow the first person you'd see. Is he defending his life? <laughs> I told you. Um, I think I might have told you off air. It all blends together. But I ended up watching that movie on my flight to uh, Germany. Yeah. Remember? Perfect way to watch that movie. Oh, it was so good. It was yeah, so good. It's good. And and uh, and so good recommendation. And I literally, I only watched it because of all the times it's come up on this show. And I know Genevieve, you and Genevieve both really like it. And I was just in the exact right mood to watch an Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep film from the well, 80s, I believe. Well, the funny thing is, I, I do like it, but the funny thing is, is it's it's the way, it's sort of like an inside joke in our relationship because the way Genevieve pitched it to me like 20 years ago or something, when she was, she, it wasn't quite that long ago, maybe it was 15 years ago, she had a job where she was traveling a lot and the topic of that movie came up in conversation and she said, oh yeah, that's like worth a watch, like if you're like on a business trip and like, 
Illinois somewhere and you're in a hotel room and it's on, I'd leave it on. I was like, what a ringing endorsement of that <laughs> film. And But I kind of knew what she meant, though. Like, it is a good – I mean, it's an Albert Brooks film. It's a good film, but, like, it's also – like especially in this day and age, it's like you don't have to necessarily seek it out. It will it'll come to you. And when it comes to, when it comes to you, just you yes. know, accept it with an open heart. Honestly, Andrew, like yeah. heaven. Yes, you can't try exactly. to sort of you can't try to sort of force it into a box or tell it what it's going to be. You're just gonna you'll find out when you get there, Andrew. What we'll do is you want to play um, Bet's dirty joke at the very, very end of the show so people yes. can like tune out if they don't if they're not ready. I for think it. definitely. Yeah. Just we're trying to, you know, we're trying to keep this. We have a right now a five star rating from the uh, Council on Family Friendly Podcasting and uh-huh. which don't, don't honestly don't Google that organization and do not dig no. into the website. There are some very <laughs> bad takes. Not. You're but, going to see a lot of American flags and bald eagles. It's, but we have five stars and we're trying to maintain that. So let's mm-hmm. let's put the dirty joke way at the end of the program and let's focus, Andrew, on something that's even more pressing to my life than Bet's dirty joke, which is, can you see on this uh, this camera, can you see there in the kind of little entry area, whatever you want to call it, of this room I'm in in the Madrona Hill studio, do you see... Those orange pendant lights that are hanging. Oh yeah, down. those are beautiful. I was looking for a ladder because mm-hmm. there was a ladder there yesterday, and yes. somehow magically the ladder is gone, but there's a light hanging from the ceiling. Magically I those now those pendant those lights are, really nice are light. there. Yeah. And I, I only am, see one though. You're saying well, lights I can't. Oh okay. wow. Oh shit. Those are. Isn't nice. that great? Oh my god. I am yes. like so. Okay, so I have been in a very. I kind of, with the projects around here, I have really gone in fits and starts. The, uh, the, the most progress is usually when I'm paying my father to be here working. But then there will be these long, like right now they're in, they're in Florida, my parents are, um, on Anna Maria That's Island nice. with their pals That's Cliff nice. and Cindy. Oh, yeah. Do they get away much? <laughs> Do they come home much is the question. <laughs> Those two are like living in a Jardians ad or something. Like they are constantly gone. I think that they're in Florida like four times a year now at a minimum. They've got their pals, Cliff and Cindy, who they love. And uh, Cliff and Cindy live in Tampa, but then they'll all meet up on Anna Maria Island. And uh, they, my parents will rent a little bungalow or now they've got all kinds of world mark points. So they do some kind of timeshare situation down there and they love it so much. I mean, they are down there constantly. How do they feel about the One World Alliance? Oh, they don't. They they don't. They believe me. They probably flew one leg on Spirit, <laughs> and then and changed they to a the rest got of the on way. <laughs> probably got on like Aeroflot. <laughs> what is the what's the uh, what's the Russian? What was the Russian airline for many oh, years? I have no idea. They got like I mean yeah hitched. They probably like hitchhiked from from um, like Sarasota up to Tampa, mm-hmm. <laughs> like God knows what. Uh, goes on with those two but um anyway so yeah when my dad's here a lot of work gets done but when i'm here by myself what i've realized is that i I, i'm very intimidated by actually trying to do a lot of these projects and not even overly complicated things just i've been talking to becca about this i've been i've been really trying to do some personal growth in the department of fixing things and 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 sort of doing projects here in this house because there are so many projects that still need to be done this place is like maybe 50 percent of the way towards uh kind of being finished or at least even remotely finished and what happened was when i got the place my thought was i'm gonna learn how to do all this stuff i'm gonna go on youtube i'm gonna watch tiktoks i'm gonna tackle i'm gonna take on projects we know we can't do and do them as the Mm -hmm. drop says and I haven't really done that. I have been, I, I've given into my, I'm not, a, I'm not generally speaking a super intimidated person. Um, I, I usually probably overestimate my abilities uh, in a lot of areas. Some people would say podcasting. Um, but when it comes to s- kind of relatively simple projects like putting these, um, you know, kind of, pe- you call, I guess they're technically called a pendant because they hang down putting in these pendant lights from kind of up, you know, the rafters, as you can see, Andrew, it's pretty high. The, the ceilings Mm -hmm. here in the Madrona Hill studio are pretty, are pretty tall because my dad and I took out, this was a garage and we took out the, 
what was the originally the ceiling of the garage, which was just a bunch of like planks. We took that out. We did this whole elaborate thing. And so way up in the tippy top, maybe 12, 14 feet up is where. Because it's like pitched, right? Is that the word yeah, now? Ang- like yeah, pitched pi- I think pitched, yeah. I think yeah. pitched would, would, would be the way to describe it. So what happened was I bought these pendant lights months ago and they arrived and I took them out of the box. I thought, boy, these look pretty cool. I'd, I'd love to have these installed because what was up there were just a couple of like bare light bulbs that were basically screwed right into the ceiling. Like oh, it yeah, was a, that's a look. Yeah. It was a temporary, it was a very industrial look. And but it, it wasn't the kind where they're dangling. At first, I thought they were going to be dangling down on a quite, wire, but, just swaying a little bit, casting creepy shadows around at night. Um, <laughs> that was the main house, Andrew, and that <laughs> remains the case in certain rooms. Today, on a whim. For some reason, the Joker's there and a doctor is saying, you see what I have to work with. Uh, from the Arkham Hill studio. <laughs> Did I say that right? I feel like I get that hospital name wrong. No, I think you're right. Percent. Arkham Asylum. Um, I, uh, look but at us. If you want to know, look at us. Look at us. If you want to know <laughs> just how weird things are around here, like this morning, for no reason, I just ripped a giant section of wallpaper off in the room that my dad sleeps in. I was in there. I was moving you're some mad stuff. mad at him? He'll, when he comes back, he'll, when he comes back from Anna Maria Island, he's going to see this Holly Hobby ass wallpaper is ripped down. No, it's like this, this house is so, other than the parts, the parts that have been fixed up are pretty nice now. There are so many parts that aren't fixed up and those parts are so grody or grotty, really. Thank you for, thank you for teaching me about that. They are so grotty that like, I'm just in this room where my, this is what, here's what's happened. And I, I'm sorry, I'm going on a million tangents here, but basically there are two bedrooms upstairs there somebody told me when they came out to look at the house that this was one of those one and a half story houses which is a thing it turns out from the 1930s where they just for some reason made the upstairs not really tall enough for a person of six feet of height as i am like i asked i go do you think that they converted this attic and the guy said no i think they built it this way there are a lot of houses around here like this they just what are you dis- say I mean are you just saving some money by not having to go up so high? It's like it is Have the you seen str- John Malkovich? It I honestly every time I don't find myself inside John Cusack <laughs> which I know isn't exactly how that movie works but um I uh it's the weirdest thing you have to duck I have to duck when I am walking in this little hallway it's so cramped up there and I'm like why did they build this this way like it would have been like two more feet of wood in every direction like you make you make this post taller you make this header taller like do everything you did here but go up two feet yeah it's the yeah. it's the that's why i thought it was what could it cost michael i mean it's a it's luke's comfort what could it be ten yeah. dollars it's like it's, it's four feet michael what could it cost? i understand if you built a house that had one floor and then an attic and then someone was like hey we could also use the attic and now you're kind of working within the confines of something that was never designed to be livable space i don't think that's the case here and so as the main floor of the of my little house has gotten more livable uh, i will soon have a working kitchen in the main area which is very cool um i you know i'm, I'm Things are starting to come together, but there are just still so many other parts that are just so decrepit and including this room where my dad has been sleeping on an air mattress for the last two years when he's here. So I decided I'm finally going to (laughs) break the bank and get a proper queen size bed from Mm Wayfair.com and put it in here. The man, I don't know how old he is, pretty old. The man deserves to sleep on a GD regular ass bed. Plus anyone else who comes over to visit. Like I've had like nobody visit this house really, including my daughter, including you and Vives, you know, um, because it's just been this weird kind of construction zone, which it still is, but there are small things I could do that would really improve the experience and make it so that I could actually start to have people over and, and just sort of use the house the way that I was hoping I could. And it starts with having any proper beds at all outside of the king bed that I've wedged into the room that I'm using, which, by the way, is mostly bed. You, like, open the door, you step into this tiny room, and it's just like, it's kind of a kid's fantasy. It's an entire room that's pretty kids much a bed. fantasy. <laughs> kids and bed to see. Wait, that didn't mm-hmm. really work. Okay, so anyway. I'm sorry to interrupt you on that. I just felt like you would have played that drop if you could have, so I just wanted to say it. I appreciate that. So I, um, anyway, all that is to say, I went up there to measure 
the room and to see if the queen bed going to overwhelm this place, which it's not the room that my dad sleeps in. And then as I'm standing in there, I realize like, oh, I, this carpet is so bad. And the whole upstairs is carpeted in the grungiest carpet that no matter how many times I vacuum it, it's just it's just unpleasant. So I'm going to cut all of that out, except for like there's hardwood floor under some of it. The hardwood floor has been painted randomly in other places. It's just a mess up there. And I'm just looking around in this room and there's just this like, ho I call it Holly Hobby wallpaper. It's this very like, probably what it was, was like an 11 year old girl's bedroom at some point. It's and just generally country kitsch. Sort it's of. very country kitsch. Yes. It's probably all back in style now, honestly. Mm. But the problem is. You're a tread, Luke. <laughs> Oh, Lean into it. Barefoot and pregnant. Uh -huh. I'm. Ha I'd be, I would be so happy to be a trad Luke. Um, <laughs> but uh, I sort of. I mean, Gen I only know that term because Genevieve called me a trad wife for a while. You are a trad wife, into. bro. I was like, I was like making. What was I, I was like doing? Three things. I was like, well, making a lot of chicken stock. I was making a lot of candles. You love to do the I, dishes. I don't know what, yeah, maybe sweeping the floor. I don't know. I don't know what else I was doing. But anyway, I was just standing in this sad room, looking around. Oh, and by the way, the roof line this is all under what's called a shed dormer so shed dormer is kind of like if you've ever been in the upstairs of a house and then it's like very angled but then there's a part of the ceiling that is not quite so steep at an angle and there's windows that thing is called a dormer the shed dormer is like completely l tilting to one side i'm gonna have to have it all ripped off and have the roof replaced at some point so i'm just in this room and i look over and this country kitsch wallpaper which is separating from the wall like something from barton fink Oh, God. I was about to say that. <laughs> I walk over to it and I'm like, hi, I wonder how I wonder how hard this is to take off. And I just pull it just starts coming off. But not all of it. All of it would be fine. What it is, is most of it, meaning now there's just like a torn ass section of wallpaper mm. that just looks it looks worse than it did before because it was at least a solid, you know, visual. Now it looks bad. Um, it looks even worse. So anyway, Walt should be enjoying that in a couple of weeks when he comes over. My point is, I have really struggled I'm with... I'm really working hard to make a Charlotte Perkins Gilman joke here, but I don't know I how don't to think do it, I know I who that is. drop the reference. Did you read the yellow wallpaper? You must have taken like a literature class. And... No. Okay. I avoided well, anyway, I'm, I'm I actually glad that I didn't, I didn't learn how to joke. read I... until about four years ago. You, oh, I forgot, which is that's a problem. Um, there is a there's a book I think I read it in my women's lit class called The Yellow Wallpaper, and it's from the perspective of a woman who I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that it's probably the late 1800s, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's probably around that time. And basically, it's a short story. It's I think it's a novella or something, but it's from the perspective of this woman who is. Um, you know, basically having emotions, having like human emotions, oh, but all the men and dangerous. male doctors in her life are saying like, oh, she's suffering from hysteria. Just mm -hmm. keep her in this room. You must she you know, the more she feels, the must the more she must just stay in this room that had ah. yellow wallpaper. And then she starts to have like sort of if I recall, which I probably don't recall correctly, almost like a, a, a hallucination or like sort of like she almost like mentally folds herself up in this yellow wallpaper. Um, I guess I just wanted to flex because that wasn't a joke. It wasn't seamless in the conversation. Mm -mm. I apologize. I cede my remaining time to you. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I give the balance of my time back to the gentleman <laughs> from the Madrona Hill studio. <laughs> I will say, until Def Leppard was able to reclaim the word hysteria, I feel like it was almost <laughs> never, ever, ever being used in a way that was good for women. <laughs> Was... Yes, exactly. I used the word histrionics the other day, not talking about a woman, because I would never do that, because that is like kind of the right. Isn't that the the the? Um, I only learned the, the word, word histrionics like five years ago when it came <laughs> into vogue. I'm being serious. Like I, I I didn't didn't even know that word existed. I'm guessing that it's related to hysteria, but it means a, it's a version of being hysterical or overly dramatic. Is that kind of? Yeah, and of course, you know, and and I think it was again. As you would say, Luke, I'm out over my skis here. I guess I would. <laughs> I'm hearing from various quarters, some of it involving television's Chris Hayes, that I yeah. am the one who started saying that. I'll take the credit for it. Which I again, like it. It's a compliment, you I'll know. Take like, it. I, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, I, I think those words were originally only applied to women, right? It was like men saying that, you know, hysteria, because isn't that like also the root of hysterectomy? Oh my gosh, I. It's that sounds like it would be a thing. I don't think I'd given this enough thought. Um, but so 
all of that is to say, I have, I had big, big plans and big dreams when I got out here that I was going to, and this is so commonly the case for me, that I was going to be a different person by, by the end of this process. And, and, and one of the ways I was going to be different was I was going to encounter something that didn't come natural to me. And instead of just going, I'm going to hire someone to do that, or I'm going to just live with it. I'm going to actually, um, learn about it and I'm going to probably make some mistakes with it. And then I'm going to actually kind of figure it out. And then I'm going to, it's going to be very satisfying. Like, again, as a person who's generally not very intimidated in the world, I'm very intimidated by home improvement projects that I don't instinctively know how to do. And it turns out I don't instinctively know how to do any of them. So that leaves. But that doesn't, that doesn't scan with what you've been talking about. Is it that most of the, because you've done and you've put video of yourself doing projects and all this stuff that I would Under never be able to Under the careful tutelage but, of yeah, my father. It, that is always when you're like, yes. w when you're Walter's apprentice. Uh, yes. But, uh, God, but I, I feel like you've told other way stories. Way too many mop buckets here. <laughs> oh, wait. Totally wait for it. Wait for it. Those mop buckets are going to be your best friends in a little bit. Okay. But uh, I don't know. I feel like you're selling yourself a little well, bit Well, maybe but so. But what I haven't become is, and I would see these people on YouTube and even TikTok, and I'd be very impressed at people who are like, I bought this fixer upper. I didn't know how to do anything. And then just through a lot of late nights and a lot of like just, you know, teaching myself how to do it and going down to the, you know, whether it's the Home Depot or the local hardware store and just talking to people and just like, I just have figured out how to do this. I have not been able to take that journey myself. But honestly, and this is such a weird, uh, this is such a sad, this is such a low bar, but honestly, a thing that's kind of changed for me has been one, I'm <laughs> running out of money, and two, like this kitchen that I've been putting together because it's Ikea stuff, okay? Now, listen, that's, it's, it's allegedly designed so that just about anybody can put it together, and yet, it is complicated in a way. Like, a whole kitchen from Ikea, it turns out, is the drawer systems and the this and the that, and, and I don't care what people say, I don't think that the illustrations are always that helpful. And so I had thought, low key, I'm going to just hire my dad to kind of help me put this kitchen together. And then he's just going to like, it's going to take him one day because it's flipping Ikea stuff. He's just going to like knock it out and then I'll just, it'll be done. And I'll have paid someone to put together my Ikea kitchen, but it'll be done. Turns out it took him a week to do like half of it. <laughs> and he every day I was doing I'd be like, how's it going? Daddy's like, oh, this is a real pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Like this, this, this part doesn't fit with this part or this ceiling isn't, you know. Remember we were playing the, the guy whose whole thing on TikTok is telling people how to put together Ikea kitchens and not lacerate themselves as he had done. He had superated his leg. By the way, my dad, I would come in and I'd hear that guy on my dad's tablet. Oh my God. My dad would be watching that guy in Europe talking about how to do various parts of this thing, which I thought was pretty funny, actually. I wonder if it's especially frustrating for somebody like your dad who is so handy mm -hmm. and knows woodworking and, and construct, you know, various aspects of construction and what have you. I wonder if it's especially frustrating for somebody with a lot of know how to then, like, get involved Napa in know how Ikea. At that. Yeah, an IKEA project that is just, like, boggling the brain. I think it, I think it was frustrating for him for that reason because it's something that is very standardized but because of that and it should go together quickly and all the pieces but it doesn't always and there are quirks about the house and so then you're trying to take kind of a, a square peg and then fit it into this square-ish hole that might be more of like a slight parallelogram you know it's like it's a lot of that kind of stuff so uh, I, I, I basically, by the time my dad was, was, had to go back, uh, to w one of his many trips with my mother, not even the Florida one, I looked around and I realized this kitchen is not even close to being done. And I realized that it was going to be on me <laughs> to put it together because the guys were coming out to do the, the countertops. And unless it's all done, as we learned, yeah. Um, oh, that I could be a real problem. A I know it didn't, I didn't, um, I think I got $200 worth of content out of that. So at least uh -huh. there's that. But anyway, so I just said, this is going to be complicated. And again, there's a lot of like drawer systems. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of stuff with this Ikea, these Ikea cabinets where it's like, it's very easy to do it wrong. Cause it's like the drawer has this face that goes on it, but the face has these interchangeable locking parts that you screw on. And if they go on slightly wrong, it's offset by a quarter inch 
which means it hits something, but then if you change it, it's gonna, it's like, it's just a lot of doing it wrong, sitting there thinking, well, this is, they sent the wrong thing, and then sitting down and then like going online and then taking it apart and redoing it. And I had to do that with each and every section of this kitchen. And I will tell you that by the end of it, first of all, if anybody needs me to come put together an Ikea kitchen, I'm your guy. Like, I... Sounds like you're not. Uh, Andrew, I am now a recognized <laughs> master because what happened was... You have your own video series? I do. <laughs> I uh, What happened is trial and error. And this is, of course, really the, at the core of every, pretty much everything in life that you don't know how to do, and then you try it, and then you are bad at it, and then you... Uh, learn how to be less bad at it. And then eventually you're sort of pretty okay. By the time I was putting together the last of the stuff, in fact, here in the Madrona Hill studio, I'm going to be using some more Ikea cabinetry um, for like a kind of a kitchen island thing. And um, the I put, there, there's a, like a partially assembled base cabinet behind me. And I put that thing together in under five minutes. And like when it comes time to put the drawers in, boom. I now go to the Ikea kitchen department and I'm just telling them I need this, 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 and this. And also, and not, not that one, because that one doesn't, you know, like I'm, I've gone from being very intimidated by this thing to being overconfident and honestly terrible to be around, uh, which has been the goal. But I've been trying to- You might to say that you're, you're, you're all about that base cabinet. Uh-huh. Yeah, no Sorry. trouble. I'm just going to keep, keep trouble. Try, just keep throwing these things out at you. Hey, do we have any and, dirty uh, jokes that we could yeah. hear try to change up the energy? <laughs> yeah, so, we really do. I need to change up the energy. Go ahead. So please. I was trying to so I've been doing that and I and I have been feeling actually kind of even though that's such a low bar, it 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 kind of was important to for me because it it was like, here's a thing that I am dreading doing that I know I'm going to be bad at, that's going to take me forever, that's going to be frustrating. I'm going to want to go sit on the porch and have a beer. Like, there's a million, th like, a, a million trillion things I'd rather bleep and do than to be bleeping with you, in the words of Big Sean. So, I, um... I think that was Megan Trainer. Oh, I am always mixing them up. Mm -hmm. So, I, uh, it just... The idea that I that I tackled this thing and I got it all figured out and through trial and error it ended up being and now the, the countertop is in and then I had to wait 24 hours for the countertop to cure or something so now uh, yesterday Andrew I stood there and I had some cheese <laughs> and some crackers and some olives on a plate and I was just the plate was sitting on a countertop in the main area of my little house and I was like eating oh so there was a pickle on there I was eating some pickle and cheese and like just kind of looking around and being like, whoa, this is, and the, all the cabinets look really nice and are all together and the drawers and mm -hmm. the, it, I was like, holy smokes, I did this. I actually did this. I didn't just hire someone. I mean, I did hire someone to do the countertops. Don't get me wrong, but I've been trying to harness that good feeling of like, Hey, I can actually try to do stuff that is not nat does not come natural to me. And one of the other things has been these chandelier, they're not chandeliers, they're pendant lights. Because what I knew I was going to have to do is I was going to have to climb up into the rafters of this place. I was going to have to, first of all, turn the power off so I don't electrocute myself, unscrew the thing that was in there, which is one of those like ceramic, very basic round outlets for a light yep. bulb, if that makes sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. Take that out, pull all the wiring out, get these pendant lights, figure out the facing cover for them, rewire all this stuff together all on a ladder at about 14 feet, mm -hmm. screw it all back in, level both of the pendants so that they're like, you know, oh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Like, and I was just like, and I, I really had that, like the, the boxes of these pendants have been sitting here for months and I've been thinking, daddy will do it. Like, I'll just have my dad do it. That's what I kept well, thinking. Don't I'll, say it in that voice. I mean, that's, that's half the problem there. You think that's why he's you're saying it in that Do you think voice? that's why yeah. he's fled to Florida? Huh. Wonder why he keeps leaving. <laughs> daddy will do it. That's the name of my YouTube channel. Daddy will do it. <laughs> it's just a video. Yeah, it's your video, but you're just taping him yeah. or videotaping him. People don't say tape anymore, do they? <laughs> I do. So what I realized, though, was so I don't own any um, like a decent ladder here. There were some that were left behind. Did you guys inherit a ladder at your house? I feel like one of the things you will often find in a house when you move into it, if it has a garage, is like a shitty ladder that somebody didn't want to take with them. 
I don't think we inherited it, but we got that one from oh, the, um, ladder, the district? ladder district in Renton when Genevieve, what did she tell me? She told me via text because I was out of town. Uh-huh. I was pulling a Walt and she said, I got a line on a ladder. Mm. It was like a, maybe a week before we were moving into our new place, but she had a line on a ladder. She got a free, because you don't want to overpay for no. a ladder. She got a free used ladder off a of Craigslist in mm-hmm. Renton, yeah. which Chris has over there literally kind of, kind of giving us a look at how to use the ladder there. Uh-oh. Which is literally buckled okay, underneath we're me. We're going to make sure oh. that Chris is okay. Yep. And that has never happened. Um, While so, I've been trying to, like, you know, I wasn't using it properly. I'm trying to use the hedge. I'm tiptoeing on it. It's buckled underneath me. Like, it is no long. Like, once a ladder goes bad, a yeah. ladder goes bad. Yeah, it doesn't come but back. Just like, just like yogurt and half and half mm-hmm. and other things that go bad in this household, Genevieve insists it's still good. Mm-hmm. And so she's hanging on this ladder that I think is fundamentally a liability. I am here as a fundamental liability myself, Andrew. I'm yes. here. I'm here to tell you. Spend a little bit of money. Thank you. On a new working ladder. The advances in ladder technology. <laughs> Forget EVs, okay? Forget Starlink. Forget AI. Forget whatever you've been hearing about. The greatest leap forward in human technology that I can tell in the last 10 years has been ladder-related because I have always been just using some old, weird, like, the ladder that was left here in this very garage before it was a studio. I was like, cool, free ladder. My dad was like, "Uh, they call that the Widowmaker (laughs) because... It's uh-huh. an extension ladder that the design of it is that it's it. Oh, I think the design of it is that it has this, you know, clicking lock system. But sometimes I think either the locking system would kind of slip or it also is missing a rung by design. So you're going down the ladder and you're like, oh, uh, this is where there should be another rung. And then there's just not a rung. And that has something to do with the extension system. So I had that ladder. I had this other one that they left here that was in the side yard. I got the, the, this, I don't know, seemingly more okay of the two ladders. This was two days ago when I'm contemplating doing this project. And I get this old aluminum ladder that when I pick it up, it's like rainwater is like leaking out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. That's how you know it's ripe. And that's Anything great. metal that's been out in your yard, just... I'd say tip that thing on its edge before you bring it indoors because there's going to be rusty-ass rainwater in it. Right, right, and probably mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, you name it. So I, I'm trying to, like, shake this thing out. I bring it in here. It's got these little feet on it that are kind of, like, wonky. I lean it up against one of the rafters. It's it's also, like, the ladder is grimy. It's it's these beautiful white scissor trusses that that, that were great hassle and expense to put in and paint and everything it's like kind of marking it up you know it's just like and i'm looking at it and i'm just like i'm not gonna do this i'm just gonna wait for daddy i looked at this two days ago and was like this is not happening i don't want to do it it's gonna be a hassle i'm bad at this i'm gonna make it worse i'm just gonna wait for daddy and so i uh I, i went to bed with that plan in mind and then i got up um yesterday actually and i went down to town to do my jog and as I was on my little jog around Lake Sacagawea, I was thinking, is there another way? Is there another way to think about this, to look at this, Burbs? Like, you're going to have to drive right by the Home Depot anyway. What if you went into the Home Depot and you saw, and you just take a look around at what is the current state of ladder technology? And what if there was a ladder that you could fit in your Mazda CX-5 that would also be safer and less marking, would like not mess the you know ceiling and the rafters up so much? And also while you're there, why don't you grab a wire stripper, which you're going to need, and some of those little, you know, caps that you screw on that like sort of tie two wires together that you're trying to put together. Why don't you get yourself a Mountain Dew, too, because Pop Pop needs a treat. They always have Mountain Dew. Always. There's always some kind of seriously flavor blaster Doritos, (laughs) a Slim (laughs) Jim or two, and then some kind of Mountain Dew product. And a Code Red, yeah. Yes, right. So, like, I was like, why don't I go in there, see what they've got, and then bring it home. And then if I if I find that it's too intimidating or too much, I just, well, we can stop at some point. But maybe having the right tools for this uh, will make a difference. And I go in and I get to the ladder section, and I'll be gosh darned, Andrew, if they don't sell this ladder by the Gorilla Company, I think it's called, that, like, 
it's so slick. So think about the typical kind of A-frame stepladder that, that most of us have that you can use for kind of, you know, projects around the house where you don't need to be real high up. They make one that is that kind of ladder, but then you can flip that other part around and turn it into an extension ladder. It goes up like mm -hmm. 14 feet. And it's got like a really cool, really stable tray that comes off of it. And it's got great rubberized feet on it. And the top part, I don't know if those are the hands or what, but it's like every single part of it is well designed. Like it's not going to slip. It's not going to mark things up. It's stable. It's not like I'm not up there being like, Ugh. and like there was something about getting this ladder yesterday and setting it up that it was like, it made me feel like confident that I could potentially do this. And so sure enough, uh, yesterday while I was listening to the last few chapters of Jane Marie's great new book about multi-level marketing, uh, because I'm doing an interview with her tonight for Livewire down oh, there at the shoot. Alberta Rose. I thought because you're getting get into multi-level well, marketing. Well, that's the thing, Andrew. I am I've also started a business selling ladders, and I am looking uh -huh. for associates to help me with this. Okay. Well, that sounds oh, it sounds like a burgeoning business i'm excited to learn more this has all been a setup for my multi-level mark i mean you want to talk about the original I mean, multi-level marketing level, right it's it's ladders too baby good <laughs> i gotta make money on these ladders so i so anyway yeah i I'm, I'm like listening to the the audible of jane marie's book and i'm up on the ladder and uh, granted there were some you know highs and lows literally and figuratively it i cut my I cut my thumb really badly, um, and then it was bleeding all over the ladder, and then I had to get down and fix that. And, you know, there were there were a, a number of—at of, um, one point, I got the first one all put together, tested it, turned the fuse on, turned the breaker on. The light worked. I was like, sweet. And then I had to put all the wiring back up into the, like, kind of, you know, cavity that it all goes in before putting yeah. the cover on. And, of yeah, course, in the, the process thing. of doing that— one of the wires came loose. Uh -huh. So I get it all screwed back together. I get down, I turn on the light and it's like nothing. Price is right, sad horns, you know? But I just was like, okay, this is the process, right? This is, as I like to say, this is the good part. So got that figured out. The second one went in way easier because I had now done the first one and kind of figured out the little angles, which was to, after I get the twist on there, then electrical tape the whole thing so it's really secure, but make sure they're pretty separated so these two things aren't going to cross or spark or talk to each other up there. And, like, I just was figuring it out a little bit. And um, and anyway, I got them up, and it's very, very gratifying. And I, I really think, like, I'm so excited about this ladder. I feel like this ladder has empowered me <laughs> to, like, you know— to, to feel like I can I can do some of these things that have been intimidating to me if I'm willing to invest the time and be okay with the fact that it's I'm gonna be bad at it at first there's gonna be some mess ups but like you know I don't know it just it's been a good few days here where I feel like I've been pushing through some personal barriers about this kind of stuff I feel like you're gonna start taking this you know personal support ladder with you everywhere and people are oh everybody's bringing ladders on planes these days yep. you put a little vest on do not like, pet okay. we <laughs> do <laughs> not <laughs> pet we only allow ladders in this tavern if they're support ladders you're like it is look at the vest it's a support ladder you're going to show up at uh, on stage at mm -hmm. live wire tonight did you say or tomorrow with tonight this ladder yeah yeah it gives, you, it gives you a certain sense of confidence it's you portland know. portland is a very progressive town no one's going to question <laughs> right. me they'll understand i under I, I do think i understand that story it gives me you know, it, it, we're pretty well into the show right now, yeah. and I think we have other things to talk about, so I won't get into it. But I have found, and I'm, I'm just, just right now as I speak with you about this, putting sort of vague feelings into words and possible, like, actual <laughs> thoughts here. Deeds. But, like, I've had... I realize that I've been kind of anxious lately. This <laughs> is a shocker. Um, and one of the things that's been sort of driving my anxiety sort of is like when I go outside of the house here. Well, that's it. I'm just <laughs> going outside of the house. No, when I, I, you know I love our house and I love puttering around in the yard and everything mm -hmm. during the summer months. It's, I find joy in it even when it's, you know, do I want to spend all weekend trimming the hedges? No, sometimes it's a barrier to get out there and do it. But then once you do, you get the ball game on. It's yeah. very satisfying, all that stuff. Um, but for some reason, and maybe it's because like we've had a couple of warm days where it seems like summer has started and then of course it's, you know, kind of fall spring a little bit and then it's cold again. But I'm looking around at things that I feel like this really needs to be done, but I don't, I can't explain it for the first time in this house. 
I just feel overwhelmed by it instead huh. of looking forward to a project. And maybe it's because I haven't talked you to You should come see this place. Have you yeah. tried tearing the wallpaper off Barton Fink style? <laughs> I need to get a. I need to get another um, ladder. No, I did get a good ladder for after that other one buckled underneath me. Um, I used like a, a housewarming gift of a Home Depot card or something good. from some friends and got a good ladder. Nice. Not not a transformer ladder like yours. I think I think I've gone on my last ladder that is a leaning ladder. I think I'm a frame all the way. And, and as I as I just ease out of the climbing on ladders, as you business. age out of the ladder. That's by the way <laughs> yeah. something else that I should have thought. My dad's big thing now is he's like I don't climb on ladders anymore. He'll tell random oh, really? people at Home Depot this. By the way, it's yeah. one of the main conversations that he has at those places. To people that didn't even ask. Oh, yeah. He's I like in a progressive commercial. Yeah. Just like one of those guys becoming his parents. Hey, are you telling people that you don't go up on ladders anymore <laughs> at Home Depot? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like I, just things like I look at my my roof of the little uh, garage we have. And the garage is not in Home of the human door? Anyway, but now we have installed a human door on it. And uh, no, I didn't say human door, friends. I said a uh, human door. Now that's something Walt door. would really love. <laughs> but like there's so, you know, this is Seattle. Shit, there's so much moss on the roof that it's actually mm -hmm. starting to grow upwards. It's like yeah. we have a little garden. Eventually, you will have a living roof, which is very, very in style yeah. these days. <laughs> very in, yeah. And like, it's just like I need to take care of that. And also, when Seth, our um, the 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 neighbor who lives down the street, who is a what is the word, a contractor? Handyman. I guess he's put in this door, kind of a handyman. For some reason, handyman still just seems. Handyman seems like they fix the flag on your mailbox that won't stay up. Right, right? exactly. It seems like it's not taking. Seriously, contractor, you could say contractor. Con I'll just say contractor. Um, but he's kind of a jack of all trades, and like he was kind of walking around our garage, which again, these and I look at is this is something that will probably, hopefully, in five or ten years, maybe tear down and and, and build you know an ADU there or something. But um, you don't want it to totally go to seed on you. And he's like, look at your downspouts. He's like, you know, he just is seeing things that I don't see. Right, and that's always. I remember when our pal Barry came over here, and Barry's just a generally smart friend, broadcast Barry. Um, like he visited our house like before we even moved in and he's like oh well there's your cable coming in over there there's your sump pump and I'm like oh sump pump I, I, I thought that was just where Oscar the Grouch lived underneath <laughs> there I, 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 like I know so little I, I don't look at the house and like I don't see it the way other people see yeah. the structure and the things and like and so now I just sort of I have this sense as as we're you know kind of I guess in mid spring now and the days are starting to get a little bit warmer instead of being excited about projects I'm feeling pre overwhelmed mm -hmm. sort of and I need to I think a part of it too is this speaking of the garage it's so cluttered in there right now like it's you know mm. Vives and I always have a balance of like kind of being overly neat that would be me and maybe a little too cluttered Genevieve but also like that's where Genevieve does a lot of her woodworking projects which bring her a lot of joy and so I don't mind sort of seeding the garage over to that but then during the winter we started storing more and more stuff in there but not thoughtfully and we also have like just debris in there like the mechanism that used to operate the garage door and some random old fence pole and like she's just starting to pile up and literally when I go in there if I just have a small soup canister of random screws that I want to put in the garage I go in the garage hmm. and I literally can't find one place to put it I can like uh, balance yes. it on top of like 17 different flower pots that are about to topple over yes. or I can or I can sort of like maybe sweep away a pile of rag it's just like I go in there and I sort of just get the hives and I just keep telling Genevieve uh, and I just think that this will help my mental health so much I want to rent a truck from Handy Andy mm -hmm. who's are they still sponsoring you in they are sports career. Yes, they okay, are. Okay, good. They sponsored your little league team. I know when you're a kid. I'm going to go to Handy Andy, rent a truck. I want to open up our garage door, not the human door, mm -hmm. the big door, and I want to pull literally every object out of the garage. You want to do all out into the driveway. A large scale version of how you like to clean your bathroom. Exactly. I want to pull everything out, pull it in the driveway. The stuff that we do not want to put back in the garage goes right into the handy Andy truck, and I'll take that to the dump. And then everything else we can put back one by one yes. in the way that, that sounds we like a great weekend project. Yeah, I feel like. But whenever I say that to Genevieve, she looks at me and she's like, "It's not that bad. I don't think we need to do that." I think she thinks I'm going to be throwing away too much stuff that maybe she thinks I've we'll seen use this down movie before. But. <laughs> you mean well, the television life, program mean, is called Hoarders? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to this or this put a label on one it. of these has to go. <laughs> but but that's a perfectly good raggedy and all you just so <laughs> you just sew a new arm on it. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Pull the knife out. I don't know why there's a knife going through that doll. But uh, anyway, so I mean, I do sort of think that like if I can do that mm-hmm. and then get the garage and just sort of yeah. reclaim that space, sort of, I just have this this sort of. Um, and again, I haven't talked about it with anyone. I haven't even put it. Well, now you've talked about it with me. Words. Yeah. Now I'm just sort of like, I think maybe if I can sort of like reclaim that space and feel like I have control over it again, then maybe the uh-huh. other projects in my life this summer might feel a little bit more doable. I am feeling right now, like. And I'm, I'm not trying to be glib about this, and you're absolutely right. We need to thank some dazzling donors. There's no way we're doing top stories. We can probably do some dazzling donors and go right mm-hmm. to Blur's days. But, like, I'm not ma- I'm not trying to make light of this at all. But I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm in a manic phase, but I'm in, a, I'm in a phase of high motivation, if that makes any sense. Like, when I, like I woke up at, like, 5.45 this morning. I was like, okay, what's next? What can I do? Like, I'm in, I'm feeling very, I went from being kind of dormant uh, and mm-hmm. kind of just being like feeling very like this is, I'm just rolling this rock up this hill and it's just never going to happen to now. It's like everywhere I look, I see a project, but I think let's just, how do you eat an elephant? As my mm-hmm. friend Sky used to say, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? It's just like, okay, this and then this. But and also I, I'm, don't eat elephant though also. No, just unless it's sustainably. Unless it's yeah, sustainably I mean, I, sourced, I, I, I guess <laughs> the ag industry and their the way they raise elephants is inhumane. But I, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm in this mode right now. We'll see how long it lasts. But I'm just kind of like I'm just feeling like and again, it's from something as small as assembling some IKEA cabinets and the drawers and the drawer faces or whatever, and putting in two pendant lights. I mean, this is this is not complicated stuff at all. But it is somehow changed for me fundamentally how I feel about if I can do things or not do things. So that's kind of good. Okay, we'll wrap things up with one last question. It is ladder related and I'll allow it. it. Um, and that this seems like the perfect place to end this actually. Uh, On the show sheet when you wrote uh, Luke loves his new ladder, you wrote loves L U V S. Is that a, a sort of a play on words I'm not getting here or is that just sort of how people say love on the internet now? I was just making fun of the fact that I wanted to talk about my ladder on the show. Like I almost and like I have a crush. A I have a crush on okay. it. So I like to sometimes just put in fun little things for you a uh, to let you know that I know that it's silly that I wanted to actually talk about my ladder with you. So that I felt like it didn't deserve L O V E S. It deserved L U V S. In all seriousness, I think that that feeling you're having right now about getting a couple of things done and then feeling emboldened and looking around and being like, this is achievable. I actually think that's very relatable, enviable, because I think that we all go through ups and downs. with uh-huh. it. And right yeah. now I'm probably at the down and you're at the up, you know, but like I swear once you've I got that garage sorted, though, about. yeah, dude, once everything <laughs> has a place like just imagine once you've got that whole thing like organized and all the every you know yard tool etc it's all goes somewhere then the next time that you need to like mow your lawn or mm-hmm. get something together for your little fire like just there's something about and the basement of of my house is uh is would put your put your human your human garage to shame right now but this is how this is how motivated I'm feeling we'll see if it lasts but like you know at some point I'm going to go down there. I'm actually looking forward to this. I need to pull everything out of the basement, Mm -hmm. reorganize it, get it all set up because I'm thinking about building a very, very elaborate catio for bubbles under the deck. Oh, nice. Like, oh, very I'm thinking good. about turning yeah, the whole under idea. the deck part into a catio for her. That's really smart. Because it's not really usable space anyway, but it's already framed out. Like, it's basically like all of the hassle part of building a, a structure for your cat. Like, think of a chicken coop, basically, but like a yeah. big one. But would it's it be like, a dirt like she would be like playing on the dirt floor or grass. whatever? Or would you have well, no, grass? She, no, like, it'd be, it, so what she would do is there's a window that like a little kind of a basement window, right? That's small that used to just be above where the washer and dryer was. That's now gone. And that window could be her access point from being in the basement to being outside, but still protected and saved in mm-hmm. this you know, screened off thing with cat toys and grass that she can run around but on. But actually, that's like actual real grass. Like you yeah, it'll be outside, but that's, under that's the awesome, deck, yeah. right? Like, how cool is that going to yeah. be? So yeah. I have this whole thing of, like, getting the basement, like, again, which is just a absolute nightmare of, like, 1930s technology. I mean, it's just, it's just dank and floods sometimes or whatever. But get it all, at least organized and get it ready for when we bring bubbles back out here so she can have this catio. I'm just again, I'm 
I've been in a real, I've been in a real fallow period and now I feel like things are, things are, everything's coming up millhouse. So I'm going to try to ride this as long as I can yeah. until I go back to my totally under motivated mode. We was hoping for some razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. That's right, man. Razzle dazzle. On your mark. On your mark. Get set. Get set. Now ready. Ready. Go. Everybody ready. Hey, let's thank some dazzling donors who are making TVTL possible today with their donations. Thank you so much for allowing this to be a job for me, which allows me to buy a ladder that will safely support my ample carriage as I climb up into the rafters of the Madrona Hill studio. Thanks to people like Christine Blake in New Malden, Southwest London, United Kingdom. Heard of it? UK, baby. Intern- That's right. TBTL International. Your London-based Scottish 10 here for another year, another dazzle. I may have been a little grumpy with TBTL recently, huh? Uh, due to Luke's hot takes on UK police procedurals, but my 11 pointed out that I am exactly the same way regarding US TV. How do these maverick detectives keep their jobs, for goodness sake? So I will grin and bear it. I w- so remind us what we're talking about here. You were watching a lot of like UK police procedurals with your dad, right? Yeah, yeah. And you were sort of you were sort of I think a little bit. well, I think what I, I here's what I what I said I loved about shows like Shetland, and I'm not being sarcastic. I love that they are completely and totally disconnected from the real timelines of police work, meaning because of course it wouldn't be an interesting show if uh, Jimmy Perez needs Tosh to get him some information. Um, hey, can you get the um, CCTV on that? And she says, well, I asked the judge for a warrant. We're going to hear back in four weeks. <laughs> like, that would be a boring show. So what happens is he mm-hmm. goes, I need the CCTV on that. And she says, I've got it right here. And we can see the perpetrator. Like, and also, uh, like, v- you know, I don't, the Miranda rights don't seem to be a, a huge part. Like, there's just a lot of stuff that where the, for the purposes of the show to be more entertaining, There just seems like, you know, there's always a CCTV camera and it's always immediately the footage is available to the law enforcement folks that need it in that moment. They don't call them Miranda rights there. They call them lift rights. Uh They do. Boot rights. (laughs) That's right. I was going to go. I had to go water closet, boot or lift. Uh That's it. Those are one of my three go to's. I couldn't give you a fourth. Uh Seriously, uh, seriously, though, still loving the pod cart, and I am so glad you're making a success of going independent. It's going to be a hard year with the U.S. election and probably an election over here as well, uh, which almost certainly will be equally awful. So grateful mm. for your virtual friendship, and as an oldster, I'm totally here mm. for Andrew's light bulb organization talk. <laughs> that one was for the kids. Oh, That'll no. be something you can. I guess you don't keep those in the garage. See, that's another one. No, garage. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, but but maybe you can once that thing is all organized and fancy like that. Uh, lastly, a couple of TV recommendations for Mr. Burbank Senior. Oh, Vera. Set in Northeast England and Scott and Bailey, both really good TV series. Well, Vera waltz way ahead of you on that, Christine. Hmm. It's really funny when I scroll through BritBox with my dad because he Uh and my mom have watched every single program that the BBC has created, um, particularly anything with mysteries or crimes involved, but really the whole thing. It's the only stuff they watch. And the most fun part is I'll be like, Oh, hey, Dad, what about this show? And he'll go, eh, it's not very good. And I'll go, oh, okay. I mean, we watched all of it. Yeah, (laughs) twice. It's always, it's not very good. I mean, it's not always, but it's often, oh, yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really enjoy that. We watched it twice, like you said. Like, it's the fact that he didn't love it never means that he didn't watch all of it with my mom. (laughs) Well, you just sort of... um... We were joking around yesterday off air. You just sort of soft launched a development um, right there, Luke. Uh, Brickbox, huh? We're not um, you, we're not bootlegging our British dramas anymore. Old, no, old because TV. I love nothing more than overpaying for content. I am now. So you got it for them as a gift? No, like, I got it for me it... as a thing, so he and I could just watch the dang. Watch uh-huh. the dang programming because I think it's five bucks a month or something. NPR got and, and, me uh, as opposed to him like coming with like a USB thing to plug into the back of your TV or whatever. And then also, what's that program? You'll know this. There's the program you have to use sometimes to interpret the audio 
because the video and it's it's the, it's the mm. this uh, the the icon for this is like a triangle with an exclamation point oh, in the v- middle. Oh, VLC player. There yeah. you go. We'll have to use yeah. like employ these various tactics to like sync up the audio and the video cuz they're separate. Well, that's just a media player in its defense. Anyway, I'll Well, maybe you know, not I'll that. Give but me like, your dad's number when he's back from We've had issues in the, the past. Islands. We've had issues yeah. in the past with the audio and video not syncing up because when it was bit torrented those files came down separately in some way in different folders or what have you. I don't know. It's just like, point is, I thought it's worth five bucks a month for us just to be able to go Shetland and watch it yes. or Vera <laughs> and watch it. Right, um, right. So, uh, so that's the scoop. Yeah, so my dad and I, oh, it's also, uh, I, we need to move on. Christine, thank you so much. But like, I just have a yeah. million great stories about Walt. So I bought this couch from Crate and Barrel. And let me just put it this way. It wasn't, overly expe- it's it's it wasn't ridiculously expensive by the standards of a pretty well-made couch but it was more than the sum total of every piece of furniture my parents have ever purchased in their life and that's not because this was like a ten thousand dollar couch this is because my parents have probably spent at max eighty dollars total on all of the furniture they've ever had um and so i get this new couch and i carefully selected it for durability for its shape it's plushness i had this whole image of you know me and my my little postcard moments of like i'm gonna like relax in this couch and watch tv and 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 look at the boats and like this whole thing was in my mind and i got the couch all set up and by the way it has totally worked for that i love sitting on the couch i love watching my tv and i like looking over at the lights of the boats going by at night like it's working my dad sits in and he goes huh there's not a lot of back support and then he goes and he gets the most jacked up pillow from the other room. Like, there's always at least one room in my house that's just like where I put all of the crap I don't want and my feelings and just like mm-hmm. don't go in there. And he goes into that room and he gets this like janky old scrubby pillow and he puts it on my beautiful new crate and barrel couch to prop his back. And he's like, that's better. I'm just like, Walt. Can't you enjoy this couch the way I want you to enjoy this couch, mm-hmm, sir, right. while we're yes. watching BritBox? We're the same person. I, when our couch down here was starting to go bad and there was no support at all, my ba- back was bad. If we were <laughs> watching TV or certainly if I was playing video games, I would pull a straight-backed chair out from my <laughs> office and set it in front of the TV in between the couch and the TV. Sit on your straight-backed chair. Up. I'm serious. I, I, I believe I, you. Yeah. Uh, um, well, anyway, thank you, Christine. Uh, appreciate your support for the program, and I'll try to I'll try to be more even tempered about these uh, British shows when Walt and I this summer when Walt and I are power using them again as we will be, mm-hmm. and you're hearing a full report every morning. A little something you'll call the Vera Project. <laughs> I did. The thought occurred. Oh, the thought occurred. No. Maestro. I say maestro. On your mark. On your mark. Get set. Get set. Now ready. Ready. Go. Everybody ready. We've also got to thank Chris Stremlau, who's in Kirkland, Washington. I think this might be the first time that I've said Chris's last name correctly. Yeah. I, uh, Stremlau the rhymes with helps, them, yeah. rhymes with ow. Yeah. Stremlau. Love these pronouncers. I just, so That's helpful. a good one, too. Because it's hard sometimes to, even if you have the um, you know, ability to give a pronouncer especially if you don't work in broadcasting, trying to explain how to pronounce something in text can yeah. be very difficult. And I appreciate Chris very helpful. and our other listeners yeah, being able to kind of explain it well. Yeah, writing things out phonetically is its mm-hmm. own art form. And it, no two people seem to agree on mm-hmm. how to let someone know visually what the pronunciation is. This happens with Livewire so much, where somebody writes in a pronouncer for me and it somehow makes it worse. <laughs> Like, I'm more confused about how to pronounce the person's name after seeing someone's best attempt at explaining to me how to say their name. The hardest sound to explain in text is the I sound, because mm. I think properly it's E-Y-E. Uh-huh. Like the, but that's but that breaks every other rule of phonetic spelling. And so it's I always find that to be like you're adding you're adding three letters to explain one like that. That's a tough one. Um, but I consider being able to write like in the proper I don't know if I still can do this, but certainly when I was writing a lot of scripts for public radio, I was, as you know, Luke, I'm not a very confident person, but I'm confident in two things. Um, 
parking parallel parking my, my vw car um and because it's a small little guy and it's a uh, manual transmission and it just makes it all so easy uh and properly spelling things phonetically you are very good at that and i appreciate that and recording the show when we do it live another thing that really? i love about your abilities <laughs> no one really except like... you will ever know <laughs> yeah. why i said that well. to you but anyway chris says hey guys I don't want to hold the show up too much with a message. Oh, it's too late for that, Chris. We've been holding it up ourselves we're, here for the last... We're keeping it tight today, Chris. 64 or so minutes. I actually stopped my timer. It's probably been more. It's more. Uh, I don't want to hold the show with, uh, with a message uh, so you can get back to the hashtag content. But here's a question I've been wondering, and hopefully some hashtag content to keep the needles moving. What happened to calling out the sweet cream district when, uh, and when introducing Andrew? I get the spicy origin of the term. It reminded me of something my rural yet worldly grandma would have said. Did it just fall off Luke's intro organically, or was there a conscious decision that was made to save the show from some sort of super salacious sweet cream situation? Super keep up. salacious sweet cream situation. That's a lot of S's, dude. Uh, keep up the good work, my dudes. Uh, signed, Chris in Kirkland. Uh, do you want to handle that one, Andrew? It was yeah, did not me, just randomly drop off of my my intro for you. It was a decision that we made, but it was also a decision that I argued we didn't need to necessarily address in the moment. I said we can just like kind of let it slip into the background. But here's a little background for people who don't know what Chris is talking about. When we first moved into this neighborhood, Genevieve and I, a couple of springs actually we're coming up on our two year anniversary in a couple of weeks, I think. Um, the very What's the first two years? Is that of, the ladder years? Is the year you get people that ladders? That is the that's the, the bronze ladder okay, year. Sure. I believe is two years. So get us that. Okay, get us a bronze. Ladder. So heavy it's and so soft. Heavy. Unfortunately, like it's tra- also very soft <laughs> for being I'm- so heavy. The hedges look great. Why are there trenches below them? <laughs> um, when we were not even moved in yet, but in the process of moving in, the very first person in the neighborhood that Genevieve met was somebody who lives nearby us. And he's a, the best way to describe him would be an older kooky guy. Mm. Um, he's like the most generous it, way would be described as a. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to, to describe him because he's somebody who definitely kind of he's. <laughs> He's got a lot of opinions. I learned recently that he believes in ghosts. I don't know if I told you that story. Uh-huh. I'm not, I'm not going to bring that in now. That's maybe for another time. But um but anyway, we Genevieve was here at the house doing something and you know preparing to move in or something and he came by and said hello. He's the type of guy who will do that and then sort of trap you in a conversation for a mm-hmm. long time. But Genevieve was sort of charmed by him. Um but as we kind of got to know him and also his reputation in the neighborhood is he there's like this lab, neighborhood list serve um yeah. where uh, where people will talk about, you know, issues in the neighborhood or whatever and we had learned that he had been kicked off of that some years ago for like kind of not heeding the the sort of rules of I guess polite society on that list serve and so we're starting to learn that he's got this sort of complicated legacy but when Genevieve met him the very first time she was sort of delighted by him and he referred to we live in an area where a few blocks away on a main drag on Aurora there's a lot of prostitution mm-hmm. and that's obviously very complicated because I think people like you and I Luke don't look at prostitution on its face is necessarily a bad thing it's just the situation you know adults paying each other for pleasure seems generally fine to me but yeah. it's the way it's manifested in our culture and the our way it society plays out for the people involved particularly the women exactly. involved is really can be really harmful which is not yeah, a of course not a way of trying to not be sex positive Exactly. And, and the, the way it is on Aurora is, you know, it's not it doesn't seem necessarily as empowering as you would want if it was something that was legal and regulated and safe, because a lot of these people have, you know, there, there's a lot of other stuff in that situation that makes it sometimes a very dark existence. But in this very moment, when he referred to the women who work on Aurora as the sweet cream ladies, he was like the sweet cream ladies. And we looked it up and some of our friends who live in the neighborhood and it turns out like there's a kinks song called like i don't know it's some some song from the 60s that celebrates prostitutes and it's mm. something like the march of the sweet cream ladies or something we just sort of thought, thought it was like like chris says sort of a, a kind of a charming anachronistic right. way to, of to describing where it kind of takes some of the like for instance when we lived in port townsend there were these they called the, um, the the places where the prostitutes were living and working, they called them houses of ill fame. And they mm. this is in the old books, and they referred to some of the prostitutes as soiled doves. 
Oh, geez. Which is, yeah, I don't like that one as much. It's silly, but it's like, well, I guess what, I mean, I guess to me, it it's so ridiculous and, and antiquated that it doesn't have the punch of something that would have been made up in 2024, you know, mm-hmm. or something more new. Yeah, and so we, I thought that was charming. I told you about it, um, and so we started, to, when you were to introduce me on the show, you'd say, joining us from the Sweet Cream District, Andrew Walsh. And I don't know that we really explained it. And also, some people... Some people's imagination ran away with them. I heard from a lot of listeners who thought that that was a reference to like bodily fluid because of the nature of the work, and that is not the case. I looked up the origin; and it had oh. to do with like sort of. I didn't like, even think of that. No, I know. I know. I was like, oh, please don't make me. I had to write you haven't several even emails gotten to explaining Bet's joke to people. Yet and you're talking about this <laughs> I know. crap. But it, that is honestly not part of the origin of the word. I think it had to do with like kind of skin tone or something like that. But uh, anyway, it became very complicated. Hearing from people who were, I heard from a lot of people who actually live in our neighborhood who actually really liked it and sort of missed that we stopped calling it that. But I just felt like there was enough going on. We had enough listeners who didn't like it, and also the more I started to learn about our neighbor who said it and I went back and I looked at some of the things he had written on the listserv and it wasn't even necessarily re- I don't know that it was necessarily related to that particular issue but again he was like he came off so sort of toxic in these old emails I was reading as opposed to the and not in a good way jolly complicated man <laughs> toxic but not in a good way um, so anyway I was like okay this guy this neighbor like he's a very complicated person he's a very I'll probably be talking about him throughout for the rest of my life. There's a bunch of stories that even you don't know, Luke, that are oh. somewhat somewhat interesting. Okay. But um, but anyway, it just seemed like a whole bunch of things sort of kind of coalesced around this yeah. idea that it's probably not worth it at this point. And if people are misinterpreting it or if they think it's disrespectful for us to, you know, sort of be, I don't know, minimizing the plight of the women who are working on Aurora or whatever, it just seemed like let's let this one just sort of fade into the background. It seems to me like it's part of the larger approach that we have landed on for just like anything that is kind of seems funny to us or is a nickname or is a shorthand for something or a go-to joke or whatever it is, I would say most of the time, and there are some exceptions, but most of the time, if we're saying something and somebody says, Hey, you know, that really bummed me out when I heard it, or that is, that could hurt some, that could make some people feel less than great. Most of the time, I think our thought is, yeah, well, we'll just come up with something else stupid to say. Like, we don't (laughs) need, there's nothing that we need (laughs) to say that badly that if it hurts, makes somebody feel not great. I think our general, our general take, and there are very few exceptions, but our general thing is to just kind of go, all right, then why don't we just find something else to say? Like, what's the downside? This, this kind of weird thing, which I very much engaged in early in TBTL's lifetime uh, of wanting to like really make sure that you, you can argue like logically you can make an airtight argument for why you should be able to use certain words mm-hmm. like, well, uh, other people say th- this version of that or uh, the original uh, meaning of this word, is, you know, like it's like, OK, but like really like do you have to is this is this that important? Is it that important for us to say sweet cream district if it makes even mm-hmm. five people have a bad experience? It's like, no, well, f- you know. We'll do something else. I think that's just, and it's sort of apropos that this was, you know, brought up during a Dazzling Donor segment because I don't want to, I'm not trying to convert this into a, (laughs) I'm not trying to monetize this conversation, but I do think that that's, I hope anyway, something that people who are listeners to the show enjoy about this community and about this program is that I do think generally speaking, we are trying to um, be responsive to feedback and not trying to, which is, you know, the older that one gets, the, 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 the easier it is to get really set in your ways and to become kind of ossified. And I'm hoping that people appreciate the fact that we might err on the side of being snowflakes on stuff a little bit, but it's like, yeah, but I mean, isn't it better to just, did we need to hear sweet cream district that badly that 10 people's experience and untold number of people that by the way, we'll never meet who are just out living their life. Um, and maybe on Aurora trying to survive like the idea that in any way that could like even make the way people think about those folks it's somehow ba- bad or whatever like it's just not mm-hmm. worth it and I think that's our yeah. general take on most of this stuff which is why we now call it the histrionics district yes Seattle, that's Washington. exactly thank you to answer the question it is now known as the histrionics district so thank you to our dazzling donors for making TBTL possible today and giving me a chance to remind everyone of how incredibly woke we are. 
There's a right way to rock and a wrong way to roll. You can just listen to your soul. Just remember that life is number one. You can be having so much fun. Just remember that life is much fun. You can be number one. Now I'm on Brickbox here. I just want to ask you what you know about any of these. Are you familiar with Mrs. Brown's Boys? You're asking the wrong person. You need to be asking Walt. He'd give you... Go, yeah, but ah. I thought the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. No, this apple fell so far from the tree. This mm. apple fell, it hit a root, and it literally went into a completely different county. This apple bought Brickbox. This apple bought BritBox and has literally <laughs> never looked at it again, except for when his dad is here. What's another one on there? Oh, okay. So Mrs. Uh, Brown's Boys, look, that almost has a I think um, Mrs. Father Doubtfire Br- there's, look well, to but there's it. Also the, aren't there the Father Brown mysteries? There's Father Brown is right next That's to that. Thing. There's something called Death in Paradise. That one I don't know, uh, but I bet you my parents have. S- Silent Witness, season 26. And is that the... Is that the woman from Leaving Las Vegas? Has she been in Jennifer Shu? Is this Jennifer Shu? No, I don't think so. Anyway, here's we what we do could do on a different day, Andrew. This would actually be funny. We should do this next week while my parents are still on Anna Maria Island. Mm-hmm. You read me shows off of BritBox. I will text my parents in real time and ask them for their takes on different programs, and I'll just report back as they respond. I love that idea. The only thing I'd love more would be if we could get uh, get your dad on the horn for that. Mm, but uh, that might I don't be asking their a little bit much. No, not, not that much. I mean, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think that that is Elizabeth Shue. I think she just might look like her. But anyway, do you want to do some blurs, Dave? I would love nothing more. How about this from Zadie, who says, I'd like to wish a happy birthday to longtime listener Christian. He's my father and an all-around good man. Aww, and I cute. hope he has a good 46th year. Thank you, so Zadie. Zadie is, uh, guy always worries. So this Zadie is the child of this, uh, of, of this Blur's of Christian. Day. Of Christian. Exactly. Nice. Now, we have another happy Blur's Day to Christian here, and this one comes from Brian in Portland. I'm what? going to assume sure? this is the same. That's what they said on Ask Jeeves. Are I can't prove that it's the same Christian, um, but also I'm not on trial here, mm, um, but I'm kind of guessing it probably is. Brian in Portland says, happy Blur's Day to my co-bro Christian. He's a monster on the mandolin. Okay, I mean, yes, he's is... no Roy Dong, no. but he was a regular guest on the Colgate Hour. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's also uh, the kind of true friend who will drive you to your colonoscopy <gasps> and have a snack waiting in the car for the ride back. Nice. Happy That's Blur's Day, Christian. Hey, um, I was wondering, Christian, could I get a ride home from the rap battle? No, could I get a ride home from my colonoscopy? <laughs> that was pretty devastating. <laughs> Reed says, happy Blur's Day to Renee in Aurora, Colorado on her actual blurs. Hey. We met Renee at the, uh, at the trivia event in Denver a couple of years ago. Reed says, um, so today is her actual blurs. That said, Renee's happiest day this year was likely when she heard that Luke's abandoned truck had been taken over <laughs> By the mechanic, as an owner what? of an auto repair shop herself, oh, I, okay. Renee, lead. You've met, you've met. Uh, Renee. Yeah, I remember. remember. I met Renee, Renee yeah. and her daughter, I believe. Exactly. As owner of a repair shop herself, Renee pleaded with Luke at Local 46 in Denver to get it fixed or moved. So I'm sure that she was glad to hear the update that something happened with it. Happy Blur's yeah, Day, Renee. Absolutely. Hey, I hate who to knew? Gossip, that, just kidding. I love it. Um, I who by knew the, that you got Renee one of the best birthday gifts, one of the best Blur's yes, Day gifts you're welcome. she could have asked for? It was $2,000. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. I will tell you, the truck's gone, by the way. Mm-hmm. Probably sold it. I don't know, but it was it was still there for many months, even after I had, even after I had, <laughs> they had filed a, some kind of paperwork to rest it away from me. It was still there, and now it's gone. So it's, it was called Clementine. Yeah. You may see it tooling around the streets of Portland. Yeah, until you click on a Kevin Morby video and you see it featured in there, and you're going to pay $10,000 to get it back. 
Grace in Ithaca, New York says, I'd like to wish my mom, Diane, and Bose Arts, Washington. Hey. Did, I do, it? Ooh, did I do it right? You did. Bose Arts? You absolutely did. Bose Arts, Washington, a happy Blur's Day. I'm so grateful for all the adventures she's brought me along on and those yet to come. Kyle and I hope you have an amazing time seeing Waxahachie <gasps> at Zoo Tunes this summer. I almost made a Waxahachie joke before I went with Kevin Morby. Yeah, I'm so glad I did for variety. Well, because that's, you know, the cover of St. Cloud, the fabulous Waxahachie. A hatchy record, I believe there's a big yellow truck on there. Mm-hmm. Probably why that yeah, was in your right. mind. Yeah. Yep. That's it for the Blur's Haze. I just oh. love the song. Yeah. Well, I guess this is the part where the art gets made. <laughs> indeed. That indeed is the Blur's Days for today. Unless Love. Ch- it does seem, seems like there's not too many in there. Should I check my spam folder? No, you don't. We're good? We're, we're, let's get out of here while we can before before I start talking about some other long-winded home improvement project that only a handful of listeners care about. I do see that some listener emails have landed in my spam folder. I'll get back to you on are those. These, but, but are they Blur's like Days? There, no Blur's no, Days. Okay, so well, I think I'm out of here. Contractually... Here. When the Blur's Days are done, I'm allowed to leave on Thursdays. <laughs> That's right. I mean, that is what we That's what John in the told me agreement. In, a, in a Thrive meeting we were having without uh-huh. you invited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, I'm sorry, I'm looking at something yeah, here and I'm having on? a thought, but don't, don't. I, I don't think it's a stop thought for it. now. It's not a yes, thought for I'm now. I want stop. you to stop that right this very yeah. minute. <laughs> uh, but tomorrow I'm accepting thoughts. Eh, I've, I'm hoping that this thought will die on the vine by tomorrow. <laughs> now I got, now tomorrow I really want to know about it. <laughs> Today I have to go uh, finish the script for tonight's live wire. Uh, we'll probably see. It's some... all scripted, dude. When I'm not writing the NFL season, I'm writing live wire. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, maybe we'll see some of y'all everything. down at the um, Alberta Rose Theater tonight. Um, show is sold out. NBD, whatever. So, fine. It's a pretty successful radio show, selling out mm-hmm. left and right. And by which I mean left. I think it's the only show we've sold out in like a year. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. We will be back here tomorrow with more imaginary radio for you. In the meantime, have a great Thursday. Take care of yourselves. Go little sluggers. And please remember, no mountain too tall. And good luck to all. Hey, dummies, it's Bet. I know you wanted kids to call in with jokes, but I heard a really fun one the other day, so I'm going to tell it. Um, what did the one saggy boob say to the other saggy boob? If we don't get some support around here, everyone's going to think that we're nuts. Sorry, that cracked me up the other day. So, anyway, <laughs> ah, power out. Power out.